I want to prepare you. Are you ready? Yes. Are we ready? Amen. So you must be ready for change in order for change to occur. He is more than ready to be your restorer today. He is more than ready to be your healer today. The word of the Lord says, is there no balm in Gilead? In other words, is there no balm? Is there no healer in Gilead? Is there no this balm that brings healing in Gilead? In other words, when this healer comes, when this balm comes, it brings refreshment. He brings restoration. He brings healing. He brings anything that you desire. Hallelujah. Amen. And guess what? This healer does not just come for the sick. He comes for the broken hearted. He comes for those who are dead. He even has the capacity. He even has the power. He even has the ability to go and visit the dead in the tomb like Lazarus. Amen. And when this balm of Gilead comes upon you, there is no sickness, there is no death that he cannot be able to resurrect. Amen. In other words, if Jesus can have the ability to go and raise the dead Lazarus who was dead for more than four nights, sleeps in the tomb. And I want to believe maybe the body was even stinking by that time. So you might be that kind of a person who has gone through so much shame, so much rejection. People have called your names. You are like a stinking being who is moving around and people cannot even look at you. But the Lord says, I've got the power. I've got the ability to resuscitate you. I've got the ability to renew your strength. I've got the ability to bring back life inside of you. I've got the ability to bring restoration in that dead business. I've got the ability to bring life to that dead marriage. Amen. I've got the ability Amen. to bring restoration in your life. Amen. Is there no balm in Gilead? Amen. I receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Check somebody and tell them, my neighbor, my neighbor, my God is here. My God is here to change my life. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Hallelujah. Now, how can you acquire change as a child of God? How can you acquire change as a child of God? Hmm. I want you to understand that the kingdom has a process of impacting the world. It has a process. There are means and words on how the kingdom of God impacts the world. And you are the kingdom. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So I am talking about impacting my world with his word. Whose word? God's word. So you cannot impact your world without his word. So hence I said the greatest weapon, the greatest weapon that God has given us to liberate us as the humanity is his word. Hallelujah. So we cannot bring change in our world 
without the power or without the impact of his word. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. Now, everyone wants to change the world. Nobody wants to see the world to remain the same. And everybody wants their world to change. Your life is your own world. Uh oh. I said, Your what? Say, My life is my own world. That is why you don't live life to impress everybody. Stop living life trying to impress and to please everybody. Listen to me. The world will never appreciate you no matter the matter. So you keep on wasting your energy, your power, your resources in trying to impress people. The world can never be impressed. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Somebody lift up a hand and say, I'm ready for impacting my world. I'm ready for impacting my world. Mm. Very few people know and understand how they want the world to change to. Very few people know and understand how they want the world to change into. You know, most people, they just claim to say, no, I need change in my life. I need transformation in my life. You understand? Everybody says, no, I need change in my marriage. I need change in my business. I need change in my finances. But what kind of change do you need in your world? Have you discovered what kind of life you want to change to? Have you discovered what kind of business you want to run to or to change into. You just keep on speaking change. Speaking change and yet change is not coming. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you need to understand. Number one, you need to understand how do we want, how do we change the things we want to change. That's one of the things you need to understand. How do I change the things that I want to change? Number two, I want you to understand what do we need to change? Unless you understand the, the troubles, the things that are causing you trouble, sleepless nights, that's when you can choose to change your life. Hallelujah. Change is not for people who are in their comfort zone. Change is for people who are saying, Lord, I don't want to remain in this shell anymore. Enough is, it is my moment to break forth. Now, I want you, number three, I want you to understand that you need to understand what do you need to change from and what do you want to change to? What do you want to change to? And clear, I mean, true change needs a clear destiny. True change needs a clear destiny. What do I mean? True change requires you to know your next destination. In other words, you cannot just burn bridges. You cannot just insult people that have been there for you, not knowing who's going to be there next to you after that. So, true change, it needs a destination. In other words, it needs a clear destination. It needs you to know where you are changing your life to. Before you burn bridges, before you insult people who have been there for you, before you begin to call names the people who have supported you, before you think about that change, know exactly your destiny of your settlement. Many people are too quick in making decisions 
permanent decisions out of temporary situations. So shake somebody said, do not make permanent decisions. Do not make permanent decisions. Out of your temporary situation. Out of your temporary decision. Do not just make decisions anyhow. Make decisions anyhow. And that's what has costed a lot of us. You just want to cut off relationships. You just want to quit certain things. And at the end of the day, you end up living in regrets. Not knowing what you did. Regretting, oh, why did I say that? What did I do this and that? Hallelujah. So tell somebody next to you, tell them, say, neighbor. 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 Do not burn bridges. Do not burn bridges. Say, be sure. Be sure. And be certain. And be certain. Of your destiny. Of your destiny. And I want you to understand this important point is a change demands change. <laughs> Only the wise will get that one. Change demands change. In other words, you cannot be a partaker of the benefits of change if you are not ready to change. Change demands. Change demands. Change demands. Change demands. Change. Now sometimes we have failed to change simply because we have omitted a few things in our lives. Now, in a journey to your destiny, there are things that we need to do as a child of God in order for you to impact your world effectively. I receive. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. Now, one of the things that you need to have if you want to change your world if you really need a clear change of your life, you need to understand your vision. You need to do what? That is one of the things that most believers, they have omitted in their lives. They just want the man of God to come and declare every Sunday, God bless you, amen. Receive it, amen. Receive it, I receive it. What are you receiving without a vision? What are you receiving without understanding what you are receiving? Now, a vision, it's very important in each and everyone's life. That means I cannot require change without me having a vision of the thing that I want to change into. So change comes also via the power of vision. Change comes by the power of vision. So, in the book of Habakkuk 2 verse 3, the Bible says, For the vision yet is yet for the appointed time, and it has towards the end, and shall not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come to pass. It will not delay. So in other words, everything that has been delayed in your life, as you write down your vision after this service, I decree and I declare. Though it may tarry, it will surely come to pass. I receive it. Though it may take long, it will surely come to pass. I receive it. Shake a neighbor next to you. Ask them, do you have a vision? have a vision. Now I want you to understand that a vision is the greatest gift that God has ever given to you. Hallelujah. Now sight is for the functionality of the eyes. Sight is for the what? Of your physical eyes. 
but vision is the is for the functionality or for the function of the heart did you hear that hey sight is for the function of the eyes vision is for the function of the heart without a vision your future or your destiny where you want to change to it can never become a reality unless you have a vision of what you want to change to no i want my marriage to change how do you want it to change what do you want it to change to no i want my business to change what do you want it to change to have a vision of what you want to change to no, I want my life to change. I want my spiritual life to change. You want your spiritual life to change? Yes, you can read the word. You can speak in tongues. You can go to mountains and do anything. But if you don't have a vision of what you want to achieve in your spiritual life, nothing can come to pass. In other words, nothing can become a reality. Can I teach you somebody? Can I teach somebody here? Amen. Amen. A vision, it is the source of hope and courage. A vision, it is like a seed. In other words, in every seed, there is a forest. In every what? There is a what? You are that seed that God is raising in this generation. And out of you, nations shall be best forth. Oh, I know you didn't hear me. Only one person heard me. Amen. Out of a seed, in one seed. One seed is equal to what? A forest. In other words... The little seed that you have. The little business capital that you have. The little thing that God has blessed with you in your hands. Is the same thing that God can turn into a multi-billion, multi-trillion, multi-trillion deal. How is he? God is not waiting for you to own the whole world in order for him to bless you. He's waiting for the little thing that he has deposited in you in order for you to make use of it and he's going to multiply it. Shake somebody, say neighbor. neighbor. Shake somebody, say neighbor. neighbor. God is not waiting for your everything. God is not waiting for your everything. God is waiting for the little that you have. God is waiting for the little that you have. Choose to change. Choose to change. Impact your world with change. Impact your world with change. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. I said, Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. And I said, Vision is a source of what? Hope and courage. Vision is a source of hope. Without a vision, the man of God can keep on prophesying to you. Can keep on declaring things to you. And you see them not coming to pass. Not because the anointing was fake. But because there was no platform where the prophecy could go and grow and bring change in your life. And one of the things that I want you to understand is that change can never come if you don't deal with your environment. Shake somebody, say your environment matters. I said shake somebody, say your environment matters. Shake somebody, say your environment matters. Environment matters. The people you associate yourself with matters. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
I said amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. Shake somebody. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Watch your environment. Watch your environment. <laughs> Makato. Watch your environment. Be in the presence of God every time. Because in the presence of God, there is the fullness of joy. It is in the presence of God where God begins to direct and order our steps. And one thing I want you to understand is that there is nobody who was born a failure in this world. Nobody was born a what? Tell somebody, nobody was born a failure. Nobody was born a failure. And nobody was born already rich. Or you might be born rich, but nobody was born wealthy. In other words, we come in this world as we are. Naked we came, naked we shall return. In other words, there is no speciality for specific people. Oh. I know my church maybe has moved that side. I'm going to move to them. This side, they are bishops. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. People without vision, they perish. People without what? What happens? What happens? Ask your neighbor, do you have a vision? Do you have a vision? Ask your neighbor, do you need change in your life? Change in your life. Do you need change in your life? Do you need change in your life? Ah, uh -uh, maybe you're asking a wrong neighbor. Talk to somebody else. Do you need change in your life? Ask them, do you need change in your life? Change in your life. Do you need it? How many people are saying, I want to impact my world with change? Say, I want to impact my world with change. I want to talk to somebody who says, I want to impact my world with change. I want to impact my world with change. Now, if you want to impact your world with change, you need to know that Moving brings pain. Oh. Moving does what? Pain. Moving does what? Pain. Moving on in life, it brings pain. Sometimes it's not easy to let go of certain things. Sometimes it's not easy to let go of certain relationships. Sometimes it's not easy to let go of certain people around your life. So moving on comes with pain. Moving on comes with brokenness. So sometimes you might be going through that pain, that brokenness, not because God has neglected you, but because he's right close to you and he wants you to move on. Because if you never felt that pain, if you never felt that shoe pinching you, you couldn't have taken off that shoe. And nobody will feel the pain of your shoe except yourself. Nobody feels where the shoe is uncomfortable except myself. And nobody can come and take it off on my behalf. It is the decision that I need to make as an individual to take it off. Uh oh. Do I still have bishops here? Oh. Hey. Check somebody. Say neighbor. Neighbor. If you see me moving. If you see me moving. It's because I'm ready to endure the pain. It's because I'm ready to enjoy the end. Say, it's because I'm ready to get healed out of this pain. It's because I'm ready to get healed out of this pain. 
Amen. You know, there are certain people who don't want to let go of certain things. They don't want to let go of certain relationships. They don't want to let go of certain connection. And guess what? The same connections that you are holding yourself to, they're the same ones that don't want you to impact your world with change. Unless you change your environment, unless you change positions, unless you change a number that you are playing in this world, that's when you can be able to score something in your life. Somebody. There are certain connections that don't add any value in your life. Oh, yes. There are certain connections that don't add value to your life. Oh, yes. They only devalue your life. There are certain places um, that don't add value to your life. Ah. You need to watch your environment. Oh, yes. You need to watch the people around you. Oh, yes. You need to watch somebody. Who is David? David, 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 David. Is it Daniel, David, Daniel, David, Daniel, David, Daniel, David, Daniel, David, Daniel, David, Daniel, David. Power. Daniel? 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 Okay, wait. I'm coming to you. There's something that is Power. troubling me about this guy. Major mom. Listen. David, you, your miracle has already come. All I can hear is that. Your testimony is guaranteed. I receive, I receive, I receive. The God of Prophet Didi will visit you. I receive, I receive. The God of Holy Ghost Embassy I will visit you. I receive it. I receive it. Jesus. Jesus. I receive it. In Jesus' name. There's so much grace of I finances receive. coming upon your life. I receive it. In Jesus' name. I receive. Shake somebody. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. If you see me neglecting you. If you see me cutting you off, it means you don't add value to my life. It means you don't add value to and together we can go forward. So I need to let go of you in order for me to move forward. I need to let go of certain people. I need to let go of certain relationships. I need to let go of certain family members. I need to let go of certain places in order for me to get to a place where God has promised me. I need to let go of certain things in order for me to get the things that the Lord has put in store for me. Hey. Daniel Matakataraba I receive it Daniel. Listen The Lord will not just heal you The Lord will not just do what? I receive. But the Lord will also give you a job. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Say, I am ready for change. I am ready for change. Somebody say, I am ready for change. I am ready for change. Change comes with pain. Change comes with rejection. Change comes with frustration. Change comes with depression. And guess what? Your depression of change cannot cause you to get down. But that depression comes to lift you up. That depression comes to make you to get to a point where you know that the people around you that are depressing you are not the source of your life. Depression will come um, just for you to realize um, that God is right there where you are, um, that God is involved um, because we serve a God um, who does not show himself on small things. Um, he's a God who shows himself um, on greater things. Uh. You might be saying, you don't know what I'm going through. My pain is too much. My problem is too much. My challenge is too much. Guess what? Your God is greater than your challenge. Your God is greater than the trouble. He is bigger than your oppression.
frustration. He's bigger than your frustration. He's bigger than your disappointment. He's bigger than anything that you think it is a challenge in your life. Somebody said from today. From today. Somebody said from today. From today. Say no challenge. No challenge. Say no challenge. No challenge. Somebody say no challenge in my life. No challenge because in my life. I am ready to change. I am ready no to change. challenge in my life. No in my I am life. ready to change things. I am ready to, I am ready to move places. I am, I, am ready to move I am ready to let go of my disappointment. I am ready, I am ready to let go of my heartbreak. I Somebody say life. I am ready. Jesus, that's my boss. You want to kill yourself. Uh, you keep on begging on people who are ready to leave you. Uh, you keep on begging people who have already made up their decision to leave uh, you. You are not God to bring them back. Uh, if it is the will of God, he's going to bring them back. Uh, but if it is not his will, you just need to let it go. Uh, Hey. 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 Say I will impact my world. I will impact my world with change. We change because I know what His word says about me. Because I know what His word says about me. Makatu shalab. I receive. Listen. Many other times. Many times, many other times, when we hold on to things that don't really work out for us. Relationships that don't even add value to our lives. Amen. Guess what? Bury certain things. Amen. If God cannot resurrect it, let them go. Amen. That's why Jesus says, let the dead bury themselves. Oh. If he was interested, the same way he raised Lazarus, it is the same way he was going to raise the father of that guy. Oh. But it got to a point where he said, let the dead bury themselves. In other words, let dead situations bury themselves. Let dead relationships bury themselves. Amen. You can't keep on investing in something where you cannot produce. You cannot keep on investing in things that don't bring profit over your life. Oh. Somebody say not anymore. Not anymore. Somebody say not anymore. Not anymore. Somebody say not anymore. Not anymore. Somebody say not anymore. Somebody say not anymore. Somebody say I am ready for change. I am ready for change. Somebody say, I am ready for change. I am ready for change. I am ready for transformation. I am ready for change. And I want you to look at your life right now. I want you to begin to look at your life. And begin to look at the things that you want God to visit after this service. Listen. When we come to a church service. It is a service of your spirit, your soul, and your body. The same way you take your car for service after it has overworked is the same way God brings you into the service every Sunday so that he renews your strength, so that he renews your life. In other words, if there was dirty oil in you, there's going to be a refill. I receive There's going to be a change. I receive There's going to be an exchange. I receive it. And guess what? People who are ready for change, they are people who are not intimidated by what the world says about them. People might have known you as a drunkard. You are not a drunkard. When somebody used to know you as a womanizer, just tell them, hey, that is history. Oh. 
You want to read about my history. You don't talk about history in the future. Amen. People might have looked you as a failure. You're not a failure. Amen. You were not born a failure. Amen. You were born a success. Amen. 